my God. Finally, after all those years on my YouTube channel. Actias Rhodopneuma, or the Pink Spirit Moth, is a spectacular insect that is very sought after by entomologists. The stunning pink and yellow males and the mint green cyan females with pink wing edges will make anyone's heart beat faster. Even the hearts of people that usually don't even care about insects. Let me tell you something about the biology of this fascinating insect. <clears throat> and I quote from a very respected and trusted source. Actias rhodopneuma flies in Laos, Luang Prabang, 2000 meter, in the Naga Hills of Assam in northeast India. And it has also been observed in China, <clears throat> southern Yunnan, Xixing Bana, Guangxi, and even in Burma, in central and northern Vietnam, and in Thailand, Chiang Mai, and Doi Phu Ka National Park, Nam Province, 1300 meters. So to summarize it, this species is found in Laos, India, China, Burma, Thailand, Vietnam, and potentially more countries around the mainland in Indochina. Now, in these countries, the moth mainly flies in the mountains. They have been taken from 1000 to about 4000 meter altitude and sometimes even higher elevations. The habitat of this insect is hot during the day, around 27 degrees Celsius, but at night it quickly cools off. Let's go back in time. Did you know I tried to catch this species in the wild once? If you are a fan of my YouTube channel, you have seen me moth trapping in Laos a long time ago, which was actually inside the habitat of Actias rhodopneuma. At night, when the sun went down, it cooled down to 80 degrees Celsius at midnight, but as the night went on, around 5 o'clock in the morning, the temperature had declined to about 7 degrees Celsius, which was incredibly cold for a tropical place, and I was shivering in my tent. Clearly, these insects resist warm days with cooler to cold nights. Now, I was a little bit outside of their season in Laos, so none came to my trap, but they would have come if I was about a month earlier, perhaps. Now, this pink specimen here is a male, but have you seen the female yet? As you can see, they are clearly quite different. The female is more of a mint green to cyan color and has much longer tails. This is called sexual dimorphism, and the males and females are dimorphic, a fancy way of saying they are different, more or less, and have different forms. This species is not difficult to breed, actually, and the best plants to raise them on in captivity are Cotinus cochrigia or smoke tree, which gives very good results, but also Rus or sumac, and liquid amber or sweet gum. Otherwise, they like feeding on plants from the Anacardiaceae family. The most challenging thing about this species in captivity is maintaining their fertility. After several generations in captivity, sometimes females start to produce infertile eggs, even after having paired. This indicates that the fertility of this species rapidly declines in some cases with inbreeding. And here's a short glimpse of the caterpillars. They're quite colorful, don't you agree? On room temperature, the cocoons can hatch very fast. I have experienced fresh pupa developing into adult moths that are hatching in just three weeks time. But it was during a heat wave in the Netherlands. It was 30 degrees Celsius for over eight days. Uh, however, pupa are not always that eager to develop. This of course was exceptional because it was so hot. This species is also sometimes uh, seems to diapause for short periods of time. If they are not diapausing, expect to have your moths in 3 to 6 weeks time. If they are diapausing, it can take longer, 6 to 10 weeks, it seems. But they never diapause very long on room temperature. Thankfully, this species synchronizes beautifully in captivity and broods always seem to hatch from their cocoons together. So they are rarely problems with sporadic emergence. Cocoons like warmth and humidity 
it is not a bad idea to spray them with warm water every two to three days to keep them hydrated. Here's a fun fact. The name Pink Spirit Moth is one I made up myself. Actually, this species lacked a common name and I am the one who actually gave this species their common name, Spink, Pink Spirit Moth. So uh, I noticed this species didn't have a common name and on my various websites and channels I began to call it the Pink Spirit Moth and other people started to copy it and use the name. Now my idea for this name is not entirely original. It started when I visited the UK to visit a good friend, if you're watching, hey there Andrew, and he explained to me how he loved the scientific name of Actios Rhodopneuma, because it translates to something beautiful. In Greek, Rhodo, this, or Rhodos, translates to rose or rose-colored, and Pneumos translates to the Greek word for breath or spirit. Essentially, Rhodopneuma is a combination of Rhodo and Pneumos. And if you think about it, it more or less refers to rose spirit or pink spirit. And I agree that it sounds beautiful and ever since, I have referred to the insect as the pink spirit moth and it was a success. I've even been so bold as to edit this name into Wikipedia. So if you ever see the name pink spirit moth, think about me. I've done this with many other species who lack the common name to make them more marketable online. For example, the Angulate Batwing. Essentially, it is an interpretation of the scientific name, Rhodopneuma. This species is not very rare in the wild, but it is uncommonly collected by humans. This is mainly due to several complicated factors. It is hard to legally export material from the countries where it flies in some occasions. For example, in Vietnam and Thailand, two countries where it flies, the insect is protected. In India, there are many laws and regulations in place that make it difficult to obtain collecting or export permits for animals. And in Myanmar, Burma and Laos, it can be hard for tourists and visitors to penetrate the rural and remote places where they fly, which is mountain forest and moth trap there. In China, permits are required and only granted if you have Chinese collaborators, which are often required to accompany you in the field. And the same is true of many national parks in Cambodia. On top of that, the insect can be strongly seasonal and requires one to be at the right time of the year, at the right place, and the flight time often differs per country. And it flies on higher altitudes in the mountains that make it logistically more challenging to trap moths there. And even then, they do not come to the lights abundantly, especially the females are more shy than the males and more rarely collected. That being said, please consider this species has a large distribution all the way from China to Thailand to Cambodia to India. A distribution that covers more ground than a lot of Saturnidae species that we consider to be common. Please keep in mind that the rarity is often a completely artificial concept that has more to do with the various logistical challenges that make it uh, difficult to collect certain species for human beings. It is not a concept with any biological value that pertains to their ecology. That being said, Actios rhodopneuma is uncommonly collected and sadly, their populations are very much declining because of deforestation. Yes, they need mountain forest in Asia. But despite this sad information and the fact that de deforestation is declining their populations, as of today it is also important to remember that the species has a wider distribution than many more rarely collected Saturnidae that receive less special attention. Perhaps because they are just not that pretty looking. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoy my show, please consider making a donation to me or tipping me online since my channel is completely demonetized and not supported by YouTube. When people click on my videos, I don't make any money from it. And sadly, my channel runs on donations for 100%. Thanks to the support of my fans, you were able to see the Pink Spirit Mall today. Without donations, I would not be able to film such unique species. And thanks to the amazing support of everybody who follows me and helped me in the past, 
this is possible. Of course, contributions are not mandatory and I apologize for giving this annoying reminder each time, but my survival, uh, the survival of my channel really depends on it. Thank you and bye bye.